And nice to meet you if you're new here. Nice to see you if you're not new here. How's it going? We'll point out the obvious first. Maybe not super obvious. I got my wisdom teeth out. I am quite a few days post-op, but I'm filming the intro and the outro after the video's been filmed. Welcome to today's video. We're reading The Hunger Games. I I have a nicer copy. It's just, I think it's downstairs. We're reading The Hunger Games in today's video. Full spoiler, we're talking about it. We're going through my reactions. We're fully annotating, we're talking. There's not much else to say other than, let's start reading this book. I have a bit of a dilemma. I own two Hunger Games books, okay? I don't know which one to annotate. This book, my dog chewed up the first day I got it. She's not much of a chewer, obviously though. She chewed it up the first day I got it. I bought a replacement, but this book I bought used. Which one do I annotate? The one that I put on my bookshelf with the thing on it or the original copy? I'm thinking I'm gonna read my original copy. Also, I don't know why I bought a new one because you really can't tell that she chewed it up when the cover is on it. Okay, I've decided I'm gonna annotate my original copy just in case there's like an annotation. I don't know. That doesn't really make sense to you, probably. It probably literally makes no sense at all. <laughs> okay. We'll just annotate this messed up one. Because then I can put this on it. And then I can display this cover. Does that make any sense to you? Like, I don't know if it makes sense to myself. Let's just start reading. I'm going to try really hard not to think about the movie while i'm reading this or not to compare the movie to the book obviously because it is the book but so far i guess i'm gonna say i'm gonna try not to compare them but i am going to also speak about the movie one of the things i wish that they did in the movie was keep the whole mare and his daughter mage in the storyline in the movie because i feel like there's a couple of things that i'm like remembering that i'm gonna have to talk about i need to remember to talk about but i feel like the storyline with mage is just it's nice to watch katniss actually have actually have a friend other than gail nothing's really happened so far i forget that this is a spoiler i can actually talk about what i'm reading so far, they have gone to the woods, obviously, to do their hunting. We, we were introduced to Mage and the Mayor, and then now we are we're at the Reaping, and Prim's name just got Prim just got chosen. Obviously, that's where we stop at. I have been annotating just a little bit. I also annotated the part where Gail notices Mage wearing the pin. His eyes land on a small circular pin that adorns her dress real gold beautifully crafted and that's the pin but i feel like if i'm remembering it somehow leads back to her mom i don't know i don't don't i don't know read this book before seen the movies plenty of times when they do this i was always like what does that actually mean and i somehow forgot it means thanks it means admiration it means goodbye to someone you love okay i just kind of like thought it as like a like a we're with you kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? <gasps> That's why. Okay. Okay. PETA! PETA! Oh no, 
I think, not him, because I recognize this name. Although I have never spoken directly to its owner, Peta Malark. No, the odds are not in my favor today. Okay, it's getting really dark in here, so I'm gonna pe I'm gonna talk really quickly. I just finished, I just finished chapter two. I'm on page thirty four. I just read about Peta. Peta was chosen, obviously, but to talk about how she was starving after her dad died, and she wasn't old enough to get uh, what is it called? Tesserae? Tesserae? I don't know. I don't know. I'll look it up. But she wasn't old enough for that, which norm which means when they're 12, they can go sign up for it and they're given grain and oil. They can make bread and stuff for the year, but their name does go into the reaping more often when they do that. Anyways, she was starving. She wasn't old enough for it. Her family was starving. Her dad had just died and Peta burns the bread to give to Katniss. He like throws it out and gives it to her and that's their first time like interacting which they don't talk about it at all it just happens and then that's kind of just how like their story starts so we're on that chapter or we just finished that part where he talks about or where she talks about like the first time meeting him and how this boy has such significance in her life so that's where we're at it's getting dark so i need to go turn the light on The lighting is so terrible in here, but uh, we're gonna talk. I'm on page 70, actually I'm on page 80, but I did want to bring you up to a little bit of speed. I'm right before they start training. So that night where they come in and they do the, when they're on the carriage and they're on fire, we're on that night where she's just introduced to the A-Box. The A-Box has a story. I remember reading about that and it's so interesting. I don't know if this is foreshadowing. It, like, is it foreshadowing? Could be. Whose idea was the hand-holding? Asked Hamish. Senna, says Portia. Just the perfect touch of rebellion, says Hamish. Very nice. Rebellion. Just the perfect touch of rebellion. Like, this could be me, you know, looking into it. But are they trying to plant seeds? Are they trying to plant seeds? <music> Underlining things that Pete is doing for Katniss, but she, they're, it's not as like a a love thing. I know he confesses like his crush for her while he's talking to Caesar. Like he, Peta takes off his jacket and wraps around her because she's cold. There was another point in here where he did something for her and she just thinks that he's doing it to up his game. He says, I'm sure they didn't notice anything but you. You should wear flames more often. They suit you. And then she goes, a warning bell goes off in my head. Don't be so stupid. Peta is planning on how to kill you, I remind myself. He's luring you in to make you easy prey. The more likable he is, the more deadly he is. And she just thinks that he's gunning for her, really. This is like where we ended yesterday, isn't it? I am on chapter eight. It's in. It's when she's in the room for the gate with the game maker showing her that she has a talent which is obviously the bow and arrow it's when they're not paying any attention to her and so she shoots the arrow through the apple on the peg then goes thank you for your consideration i say and then i give a slight bow and walk straight toward the exit without being dismissed mm Hmm. yeah that that's iconic that's very iconic of her that's what i said <laughs> i was like iconic yeah slay 
Slay Miss Katniss Everdeen. Hamish isn't letting them be separate from each other. He said they need to be each other. They need to be with each other 24 seven, especially when they're with other tributes. Pete is showing her the different breads from each district and how they're trying to, it's kind of just home for everybody. And he, so he's showing her each one and saying where they're from. And he goes, and there you have it. And she says, you certainly know a lot. And he goes, only about bread. Okay, now laugh as if I've said something funny. And I just think it's so witty of PETA. And then they've also introduced Rue. Rue is a small yellow flower that grows in the meadow. Ladies and gentlemen, let the 74th Hunger Games begin. Let's go. Hi guys, it's been a couple of days. I need your opinion, so please let me know. I'm doing, this video is just the first book, but I'm thinking, should I do one video for the rest of the books? Should I do a video for each book? Or should I do a video of Catching Fire, Mockingjay, and do Ballads of Songbird and Snakes by itself. Let me just say, PETA in here is so... Not so shy. The careers in PETA walked by Katniss, who was in a tree. And I think Kato killed a girl that started a fire. Cannon didn't go off. So they were arguing about if she was actually dead or not and then Peta was like I'll do it and went back and killed her because she wasn't actually dead and I don't remember Peta being so you know what I mean he's just not this shy like boy and I know that he's just trying to stay alive I know that she's about to encounter the career pack again where they're gonna chase her I know that's gonna happen so even though I read this book, I do not remember like anything about the book. So I guess I'm excited to see how Peta reacts to the careers chasing her. Yeah, Peta goes, we're wasting time. I'll go finish her and let's move on. Peta. scenery because I feel like I've been on the couch this entire video so we came upstairs to the guest bedroom also where my books are I also put on my Hunger Games sweatshirt because because why not because why not you know why not Candace had her encounter with Rue where Rue basically watches over her while Katniss um after Katniss got stung by the tracker jackers you know they're not the only ones who can form an alliance and Rue goes, you want me for an ally? <laughs> They're sitting and talking and Katniss is telling her that she thinks Peta saved her life after she got stung by the tracker jackers. Rue says, maybe he did save you and had to run. Katniss says, if he did, it was all probably just a part of his act, you know, to make people think he's in love with me. Rue says, oh, I don't think that was an act. <laughs> Even Rue sees it, Katniss. Even Rue sees it. Rue 
loves music, and that's why she likes Candice's Mockingjay pin. Obviously, the Mockingjay sing, and she said that's how she knew she could trust her was her Mockingjay pin. You blew up the food? Every last bit. You have to win. I'm going to. Going to win for the both of us now. Uh -oh. Don't go. Of course not. Staying right here. She just sang to her. It's a couple hours later. Um, I got my cool like little sunset lamp on and I turned it to like a greenish color. It kind of looks blue though. I'm now on page 262 but here's the thing i was recording my reactions and i was recording uh like talking through a couple of scenes i feel like they were pretty significant scenes too and the clip is gone it's really fun really cool so i guess we'll just recap rue asked her to sing because obviously she loves the music and then katniss sings her the song that she's to sing to Prim, and the Mockingjays take up her song. <laughs> and then Rue dies. <laughs> and then after Rue dies, she does like the whole placing the flowers on her and then realizing that what PETA meant on the rooftop and not being a piece in the Capitals game, she definitely understands it now. Slowly, one stem at a time, I decorate her body. Bye, Rue. I press the three middle fingers of my left hand against my lips and hold them out to her direction. And then District 11 sends, the, sends Katniss a loaf of bread. What must it have cost the people in District 11 who can't even feed themselves? The rule change and the game. Two people from the di same district can win. I lost a lot of footage. Ugh. PETA, it turns out, has never been a danger to me. Also, PETA is so, I don't know if witty is the right word. I don't think it's right. It's just what's coming to my mind. Remember, we're madly in love, so it's all right to kiss me anytime you feel like it. He whispers to her. It's a different day. Can you, do you know what day it is? It's Halloween. I don't know when I started this video. I don't. I still have a little under 100 pages left. And I need to finish this like tonight because I get my wisdom teeth out tomorrow. I got the package in the mail and it relates to the Hunger Games. So I just wanted to open it on camera. Okay, I get it. I'm on Katniss's side, of course. But Clove is kind of funny. She's kind of funny. Clove is tracing Katniss's lips with the blade. She says, yes, I don't think you'll have much use for your lips anymore. Want to blow lover boy one last kiss, she asks. Like, it's kind of funny. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> Thresh. I wish we'd get more... Th I, I wish we would have got more Thresh in the book. I feel like Thresh would have been such a great character to read more about. And he's not in the book. Like, Foxface has more appearance than Thresh does. But I really like Thresh, so why isn't he in the book more? But he just picked Clove up and slammed her and said, What'd you do to that little girl? You kill her. And even though Rue and Thresh never had this, like, alliance... They never really got the chance to have the alliance because Rue died before the game makers announced that you can have two people win if they're from the same district. Gives Katniss like this chance. What she mean about Rue being your ally? I, we teamed up, blew up the supplies. I tried to save her, I did, but he got there first, district one. And you killed him? Yes, I killed him and buried her in flowers and sang her to sleep. He goes to sleep and she goes to death. I sang until she died. And then she says, your district sent me bread. Do it fast. Okay, Thresh. Oh. 
Conflicting emotions cross Thresh's face. He lowers the rock and points at me, almost accusingly. Just this one time I let you go. For the little girl, you and me were even. You better run now, fire girl, says Thresh. <laughs> Katniss made it back to the cave, gave Peta the shot for his, for his leg. And then she passes out because she got a cut on her head from Clove. She asks how long she's been asleep and he says, I don't know. I woke up yesterday evening and you were lying next to me in a very scary pool of blood. I gingerly lift my hand to my head and find it bandaged. This simple gesture leaves me weak and dizzy. It's just the basics. Like he wrapped her head because you were bleeding, girl. Katniss is retelling the story of what happened at the cornucopia. Kato and Thresh, huh? I guess it's too much to hope that they'll simultaneously destroy each other. But that only upsets me. I think we would like Thresh. I think he'd be our friend back in District 12. I'm telling you, Thresh is great. He deserved more. Candace asked Peta about, you said at the interview you had a crush on me forever. When did forever start? We were five. You had on a red flat dress in your hair. It was in two braids instead of one. My father pointed at you. Your father? Why? See that little girl? I wanted to marry her mother, but she ran off with a coal miner. Why did she want a coal miner if she could have had you? Because when he sings, even the birds stop to listen. So on that day in music assembly, the teacher asked, who knew the valley song? Your hand shot right up in the air. She stood you up on a stool and had you sing it for us. And I swear, every bird outside of the window fell silent. And right when your song ended, I knew, just like your mother, I was a goner. You have a remarkable memory. I remember everything about you, tucking loose strand of hair behind my ear. You're the one who wasn't paying attention. I am now. Well, I don't have much competition here. You don't have much competition anywhere. I underlined all of this because it's Peter remarking when he noticed Katniss and all of that and like we all know Peter does really feel for Katniss. Katniss is responding in this way because she gets further in the games, they're gonna live longer. It's hungry and she knows that they get they get soup if they like so show some sort of romance like kiss. So that's what happened. And although I love this story, I love their romance story evolving, I do feel terrible for Peta because he thinks this is real, but she's doing this to prolong their existence in the game so they can go back to District 12. And so it's like ugh, my heart for Peta, love Peta. And I understand where Candace is coming from by just like, by just wanting to survive. They wanted to alter her body surgically? Nothing Senate designs is arbitrary. The only defense can be you were so madly in love you are responsible for your actions. Did you tell Peta this? Don't have to, he's already there. The most dangerous part of the Hunger Games is about to begin. You're back. You finished the video. We read The Hunger Games and now it's time to discuss some of the stuff we've read. I finished The Hunger Games a couple of days ago. I think I finished it on Tuesday and today's Sunday and I kind of want to get this video uploaded tomorrow. So, this month is going to be full of Hungry Games videos, I'm realizing, because I just did a Hungry Games reaping, picked my TBR, if you haven't seen that yet, go watch it. But then I'm doing this, and then we're doing 
the rest of the books in the series. One of the things I wanted to talk about is their last and final fight scene with Kato. Foxface dies because she eats the berries that Peta was collecting, which are the Nightlock berries, which are very poisonous berries. Peta's collecting the berries, Katniss is off hunting, she, she hears the cannon go off and freaks out. Oh my gosh, is Peta dead? When she finds him, she then registers that they're Nightlock berries. Foxface is dead from the berries. Then Katniss picks up the berries and is like, oh my gosh, like what if Kato's hungry? What if Kato's hungry? They're chilling at the lake and then all of a sudden, Kato comes running. Kato's not running for them. Kato's running past them. He's like, I'm getting out of here. No. And then they start running to the cornucopia because the mutts are chasing him. And something about those mutts, their eyes, they all jump on the cornucopia. And then that fight scene happens between Katniss, Kato, and Peta. And obviously Kato gets knocked down. But oh my gosh, why did his death go on for so long? I think Kato's death went on for hours. Like sun went down, sun came back up. That's brutal. That is brutal. Claudius Temple Smith, greetings to the final contestants of the 74th Hunger Games. The earlier revision has been revoked. Closer examination of the rule book has disclosed that only one winner may be allowed. Good luck and may the odds be ever in your favor. And then, oh my gosh. And then Peter goes, if you think about it, it's not that surprising. I watch as he painfully makes it to his feet and then he's moving towards me as if in slow motion, his hand is pulling the knife from his belt. Before I'm even aware of my actions, my bow is loaded with the arrow pointed straight at his heart. Peter raises his eyebrows and I see the knife has already left his hands on its way to the lake where it splashes into the water. I drop my weapon and take a step back, my face burning in what can only be shame. No, he says, do it. Peter limps towards me and thrusts the weapon back into my hands. I can't, I say, I won't. Do it before they send those mutts back or something. I don't want to die like Kato. Then they start arguing about like, no, you do it, you do it because you, you should go home. Listen, he says, pulling me to my feet. We both know they have to have a victor. It can only be one of us. I loosen the top of the pouch and pour a few spoonfuls of berries into my palm. Then I feel my own. On the count of three, Peta leans down and kisses me once more, very gently. The count of three. This book, this book is a five. Five star for sure. I love this book and I can't wait to get to Catching Fire, honestly. I'm excited to watch more of their love story. That was my reread of The Hungry Games. Go watch my last video if you didn't watch it, My Hungry Games Reaping, picks my November TBR. We have some pretty good books in that video. And I guess I'll see you, hopefully, for rereading Catching Fire. Bye. Thanks for watching.